Alrighty folks, hopefully you can all hear me properly and the music's not too loud and things. I've got everything set up a little bit different because I realized that you folks could not hear music the whole time. Um, so let me know if you guys can hear it, um, if it's a little too intrusive and how you're doing this morning. Good morning, Adobe. I see so many fans and familiar faces and friends and Adobe fam in the chat. Ted, it's good to see you. General Kenobi, hello there. Um, Daxa, hello. Andreas, Roberts, Alejandro, Adrian, uh, Michelle, Ferry, Darina, it's good to see you, Darina. Robert, what's up? Uh, well, Wolaka, Wolaka, Andrew, you can hear me? Okay, cool. Um, and let me know if music is a little too much. Um, but uh, for anyone who is um, tuning in today and you've never been here for a creative challenge before or you don't know who I am. My name is Voodoo Val and I am um, a kind of a regular uh, member of the DCC cast. Um, I'm usually doing the Photoshop Daily Creative Challenge or I sometimes host um, or do uh, illustration streams um, here on Adobe Live. Um, and I'm really excited to kind of jump into today's challenge and we don't have very much time. So I'm just gonna like jam through it. I'm gonna show you folks how you can get in like involved and um, participate in the challenge with me today. Um, but one thing I do wanna say is if you're over on YouTube, please come to behance.net slash live because that is where I am reading the chat. I am not reading the YouTube chat this morning. I'm reading the chat over on Behance. So please, um, please come over. Okay, so let me pull up uh, da, 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 my screen here. Okay, this is behance.net slash challenge slash Photoshop. Um, basically, this is where you can come and get a little bit of information on how to join the challenge um, and when all of the challenges are unlocked, one each day, every each weekday, um, at about 8 a.m. Pacific time, um, you'll see them start to pop up here. So this first one uh, says, photo compositing, co create a pile of fresh fruit by combining multiple images. Try importing your composite into Lightroom for finishing touches. Um, you can hit this get started button and it's going to take you to a place where um, you can actually download um, the files um, if that loads there for everyone. Yes, there we go. Um, so you'll be able to download this starter file and work alongside me. So I'm just going to dive right into it because it's a pretty hefty um, challenge actually this morning. Um, so let me pull up my Photoshop. This is what you will see um, when you come in to that, um, that challenge one starter file. It gives the same spiel and I also have links to a bunch of images. I'm going to pop myself over to here so that I don't block my libraries today because libraries are very important um, for today. Let me put this here um, and I'm going to move my properties and my adjustments into this little sidebar here because I want to I kind of just like to have layers, channels, paths, and libraries, and then I have my swatches and color related stuff up top. Um, so I have made myself a library out of these image images um, that I'm going to be using for this challenge. Um, and these images are actually free images on Adobe Stock. So if you will go to stock.adobe.com or just type in um, the codes at the end of this link um, or copy the whole link and um, search it in a search bar. It will bring you to all of these photos that I have over here on the left hand side or right hand side <laughs> um, in my libraries. Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to choose some of these images to kind of use in a photo composite. You don't have to use the same photos that I'm going to use. Um, in fact, you can use completely different images if you would prefer. That is totally fine. Um, I just wanted to give you folks a starting place. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a background first. So I'm going to open um, this fresh organic fig image um, and I'm actually not going to use the figs at all. I'm going to create myself um, a, uh, a background out of this uh, because in oftentimes when you have to do kind of a um, composite job, sometimes you may not have the luxury of finding all of the assets the way you need them um, exactly when you need them. Um, so we're going to actually take the figs out of here. And one way that you can do that is if I grab my marquee tool, which is up here, my rectangular marquee tool, 
um, and I select the figs, um, I can come up to edit and go to content aware fill. Um, so we're gonna we're gonna bring that in. Um, and basically what this ooh, that's already that already looks decent. Um, basically what this does is it allows me to select a portion of my image um, and basically fill it um, with uh, the amazing magic of Adobe, um, amazing magic of Photoshop and fill it with anything else in the photo that is not, um, uh, that is covered by the mask. So you can see this green appears here. So everything that's within my selection is being filled with a duplication and recreation of what is in the green on the outside. And you can edit this. So you notice how in my preview here, um, there's a little bit of uh, kind of a blur here. That is because a lot of this back here um, that's very blurry is still in this mask. So I'm gonna cu actually cut that out and see what that does. I don't actually like that. It was pretty smooth before. I don't really want to like ruin it. I think I may honestly just leave it like this. That's good enough for me, especially since we have limited time today. I don't want to tweak it too much, but just a few points. Um, if you've tried to use content to wear fill and you can't seem to find it, maybe you go up to, um, edit and content to wear fill is ghosted like this. Um, make sure that you have a portion of your image selected. That is the problem. Usually. Most times it's it's that you don't have something selected. If you want to um, content to refill like your entire canvas, I don't know why you would do that. Um, but if you wanted to do something like a huge portion of the canvas, you could just select the entire thing with Control A. Um, but uh, you typically need to you need to select something very specific with the lasso tool, with the object selection tool, however you do it, and then do um, content to wear fill. Um, you can come in here and change this mask up. So right now I have my cursor and it's got a little minus in it because that is subtract. If I want to add back to it, I can um, use the brackets to make my brush larger or smaller. You can hold alt and then the plus appears there and I can add it right back. Um, so however I wanna do that, and also something that I want to show you is I have a pretty dark photo here. So my sampling area opacity is on 50, but if you're using a very bright photo, it may be really hard for you to see through this green to know what you're masking. So you can actually crank this down um, if you want, or you can make it super opaque, really whatever you want. Um, and then another thing that I think is really important is output to. So you can output to current layer. So it's gonna change the actual layer that I'm filling. Um, you can output this content to where um, area that I've that you've selected to a new layer, or you can duplicate the layer um, and append it to that layer. Um, I always like to do new layer so I can just hide that and I'm just gonna say um, apply. And okay. Um, and now I have, if I control D to deselect, now I have a background. Um, and it needs a little bit of tweaking, but we have a small amount of time for the class. So I'm going to go ahead and leave it here. I'm going to group these, these layers that I have here and say control G. Um, and I'm going to right, right click this or double click this, say caps lock and back ground. Boom. So we got our background in here. Um, now what we're going to do is we're going to drag in some fruit from all of these other images. Um, and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the pomegranates. Um, I really like pomegranates. Um, and I thought it would be fun to do this because not only is this, it, I suppose you could say this is a very easy image to cut out, um, but it's got some blur here and blurring is not always easy to select around properly. So we're gonna get into um, object selection and some masks to make this look really nice. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm gonna grab my object selection tool um, or you can hit W on your keyboard and it will um, go up to that. If you hit W and it's not the object selection tool, you may have to right click here um, and open this, uh, this little kind of pull out tray here you may have the magic wand or the quick selection tool uh, selected but all you have to do is just select the object selection tool um have i gotten into i know i'm trying to go fast because i got a lot of stuff to do um okay so let's let's grab the object selection tool and i'm literally just gonna drag boom a little uh rectangle around there and it gives me an all right selection but I am going to tweak it a little bit and you can do this a lot of ways. I'm an illustrator so I have a stylus um, and tablet that I can uh, kind of clean this up on. You can go around um, with a selection tool um, like the lasso tool or the polygonal lasso tool um, or you can come around 
You could even use the pen tool to create a selection that is a little more precise. Um, but this is what I'm going to do is I am going to make sure caps lock is off. Um, I'm going to select my lasso um, and I'm going to hold shift so that I can add in a little more of this edge. Um, I'm going to come down here and I know that there is an edge of the pomegranate right there. It looks like we're also uh, kind of missing an edge of this pomegranate right on the end here, which we don't want to lose. Um, looks like if I hold, I'm going to hold alt um, and kind of subtract from here because there's some little areas right there um, that aren't looking so great. And I'm going to add just a tiny bit in right there. Um, now needs work, but you know, we're gonna, we're gonna go with this for now. So all I'm gonna do here, once I have this selected is control J and that gives me over here, you can see a new layer has been created um, because what control J is, is it's duplicate selection um, uh, or control J is duplicate. So right now, if I were, if I don't have anything selected and I do control J, it just duplicates the whole layer. Um, but you can make it more precise by selecting something and it will only duplicate what is within your selection. Um, faint sound. Yeah. Somebody was saying that there was some issues with the mic yesterday. I'm going to figure out what that is. I'm very sorry about, um, the quietness of everything. Um, I, I really did not, um, I'm not sure what the issue is. Um, so I hope that you guys can bear with me for today and I will pin it down for tomorrow. Um, okay. Yeah. You can also do new layer via copy. Uh, exactly. Uriel, or you can do, um, uh, new layer, um, uh, via cut, um, as well, but I'm going to grab this. I'm going to grab the, I'm going to call this palms. Um, and I am going to drag this over into our file here. Boom. And we got our pomegranates. I'm going to right click this and convert it to smart objects so that I can, um, free transform it. And I'm not going to lose any of my, um, my detail. I'll hit control T to free transform. And I'm going to throw this in here. Okay. Um, boom, boom, boom. Let's do it like, like that. Okay. There we go. Now, uh, we gotta make this look like it belongs in here because right now it looks like I copy pasted something and put it in here. Um, and that's exactly what I did and that's not great. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to mask. So if you look down um, underneath your layers panel, you have a little uh, rectangle with a, um, with a dot in it. That's your add layer mask button. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, I'm gonna add layer mask. I'm going to select my layer mask. And if I paint on this mask, um, with black or white, it is going to add or subtract from what I can visually see, um, on my layer without destroying, um, my image. So I'm not actually erasing, I'm just removing, um, and that works. So I'm going to clean this up, um, here. I'm going to grab some black, um, and I'm going to come in with a soft round brush. Um, I do have, uh, a, um, a stylus here. Um, so what you folks may need to do is use the pen tool to do a, um, to do a selection. And then in selection, you can come in and you can, um, actually modify. I don't have something selected right now. So let's do a quick test of that. Um, so for example, um, once you use the, uh, pen tool to make something precise, I'm going to grab some color here. We're going to do a little, a little thing. Um, I am going to, oops, that's the mask. Um, if I select, uh, something and let me say deselect, I've selected something and I've paint bucketed a color in and it doesn't really look very good because it's, it's sharpened. Maybe I don't want it sharpened. Maybe I want it, um, a, a lot softer, a lot smoother. Um, so what you could do is say we made this selection. Um, I'm going to make a new layer. Say we made this selection with the, um, pen tool. Um, and then I come up to select and modify and feather. Um, and I can do a feather radius of like 10 if I want to. Now, if I paint bucket, um, some color in here, uh, and deselect, you can see that it makes it, it makes it soft. So even though I'm using a stylus, um, to kind of go around things here and make it smooth, you can use, uh, your, your mouse and achieve a smooth, um, a smooth edge with the selection tools. Um, and so I recommend testing 
um, that method out for yourself and seeing what um, what you like. Um, you can also um, paint on the mask and then use go up to filter. Um, so let's see if we do this one more time. Um, we make a new layer. Um, you could also do this. So here's my box. It's like a very sharp box and, and I could go filter, blur, and Gaussian blur. Um, and then I could crank that up and I could soften it that way as well. So there's a, there's a lot of options for you. Um, all right, so we got the palms in here. Another thing I'm gonna do um, is I am actually going to, I'm gonna rotate. I pressed R on my canvas to rotate it right here. Um, and I am going to grab my brush and I'm going to soften, let me grab a better soft round. Um, let me go to general brushes. There we go. Um, there we go. Um, I, I want to soften this cause I know that this is a shadow under here and I don't want to have this, um, Hmm. You know what? It's kind of the opacity on that is a little strange. Um, let me, Oh, I don't think that I was on pure black. Yeah, that was it. Um, okay. I just want to soften, uh, this right here and you'll notice that I'm kind of cutting into these other, other palms that's actually fine um, because, let me see if I can, because I can always come in, I just wanna soften the edge here. Um, I can always come in uh, with white um, and paint it right back in um, because I'm not erasing, I'm not subtracting from it truly. Um, I'm just hiding it, I'm just masking it. Okay, so now that looks a little more like it is in focus. Um, and there's still some other little cleanup areas, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start making this look kind of like it is in this scene. And there's a lot of ways that you can do this. You can add color um, to things, uh, for example, with a, um, a photo filter. Um, so you can click that little half moon circle there and you can go to photo filter and you can start warming things up and changing stuff. Um, and you can put that on a, um, on a color layer. Um, or a, um, a clipping mask. And I think I'm actually gonna do that. Um, in fact, I'm gonna crank this down. I'm gonna grab uh, the regular color and I'm going to select a dark color, like a very dark color from here that I think matches these pomegranates. And I'm gonna say, okay. And I'm gonna turn the density up. Um, I want this maybe actually to be a little bit warmer, but dark, there we go. Um, and I'm gonna crank that up and then I'm going to right click this and say create clipping mask because I only want to clip it to there. And I can I can frequently, I can come back in and I can crank this up or down um, and make it look more like it belongs if I want to. That's one way to kind of colorize something. Another thing that you could do um, is I could simply come in here with my paint bucket tool. Um, I could sample this dark color. Um, let me make a new layer with control shift in. Um, I can paint bucket it. Um, in here and then throw it on like a soft light. Um, and then what I could do is I could put a mask on this layer. Um, I can grab my brush, make sure that I'm using black and paint it out. Um, so I just have like a nice shadow if I want. That works as well. So I'm, what I'm doing is I'm painting out the color where the light is hitting these pomegranates. Um, and then what I can do is create a shadow. And the way that I like to create a shadow is actually pretty simple. Um, I'm just going to control J and duplicate our palm layer. I'm going to um, actually rasterize this layer, uh, which some people may be like, what have you done? No. <laughs> um, well, maybe I'll, com I'll convert it to smart object and then I'll rasterize it because I don't want any of this extra, um, the mask and stuff, but I do want it isolated the way it is. Uh, and I'm gonna say control T um, and I'm going to kind of flatten it a little bit. I'm gonna bring it off to the side like so. Hit enter, control U to open up my hue and saturation. Um, and then I am going to crank the lightness all the way down to dark um, to make it black, come up to filter um, and go to blur and Gaussian blur. Um, and then I'm going to crank that up just a little bit, just a little bit. Here we go. It's a little bit better. Sort of. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to drag that down just a little bit more and I'm going to put it on a blending mode. So I'm going to come over to my blending modes. I'm thinking maybe, uh, like an overlay. 
Uh, soft light actually works. That's a little harsh. That's actually a little harsh for me for um, the blur. I think I need a little more blur, in fact. Maybe something more like that. Um, all right, and it's starting to look like it's a part of this, okay? Now, normally you would spend a little more time kind of tweaking and making things um, a little more realistic looking, but for now, this is fine. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually pull up one that I have done um, in Lightroom and show you how to edit a little bit in Lightroom um, to make things look a little bit better. So I'm gonna pull up my Lightroom here and you can see I've got this palm berry um, image that I've worked on exactly like I did before. Um, um, and I've added a couple of blueberries to it and I've imported it to my Lightroom and I'm just gonna go in and I'm going to um, open up my settings and I'm gonna start tweaking these to kind of make it look cooler. Now, one of the things that I promised you folks yesterday that I was going to have for you is a fictional prompt, okay? So we've gone over some steps of how you can composite multiple images um, into one piece today, okay? Um, but one of the things that I really, really, really want for you to do is to try and take these images um, that we are going to be creating for these challenges for the next couple of weeks um, and beyond and do your best to try to create something that is not necessarily just like, oh, I finished the challenge and you've made um, the image. Try and create something for a real client. Try and... Uh, use this image to do something that you can use as an example um, of what you can do for somebody who's looking to hire you. So your fictional client um, for, let me put maybe a dark vignette around the edges. Your fictional client um, for this challenge is a young woman who runs a warm, cozy, wholesome cooking blog, and she is going to be making palm berry pie. Um, she needs, uh, or, or any pie of any kind, you can use whatever fruit you want, um, but she is going to need an image that has all of the, uh, let's see, all of the ingredients, the fruit ingredients that she is going to need um, for her pie. Um, and she's going to use that as the image at the top of her blog post about it. Um, so she's going to need kind of a, kind of a nice stylish um, image. I don't think I need to add too much texture to that. In fact, I think it's a little too warm um, for my taste. Um, so let me actually change the temp turn the temp down. I like that. Okay. Um, and then I, you can crop this if you want. I may crop it. I may crop it over like this. Yeah. Um, I'm going to say enter and then I'm going to go file and edit in Photoshop and I'm going to bring it right back to Photoshop. Um, so we've got a couple of minutes here. Um, so I'm going to give you guys some pointers, some interesting little bits of things that you could add to your piece for um, this fictional client. Um, what if you are making a um, image that doesn't just show the fruit that she's going to be using in her pie? Maybe she um, wants you to add um, an actual recipe. So let's select a, Im uh, like a color uh, that we can use for this image. Maybe you put some kind of gradient over here. Let's select a um, transparent gradient and I'm running out of time, but I'm going to do this real quick. Maybe you add a gradient over here um, and put that on some kind of blending mode. Um, I did that on the layer just then. Normally I would make a new layer, but I'm not going to change it right now because we're out of time. Maybe you add um, a title for, you know, this, uh, this recipe and maybe you add um, a text box that has um, all of the information um, for the, uh, for, you know, what goes in it, like all the flour, all the, you know, sugar, all the everything that goes in here. And then you start making yourself like a graphic for that recipe. Just an idea um, to kind of get the creative juices flowing. Um, maybe it says like her blog name down in the corner. I don't know, but it's it's really up to you to show what you think a client, that, that kind of client would want and test some things out. That is all the time I have for today. I hope you have enjoyed this challenge. I can't wait to see what you folks post in the Discord and I gotta take off. Adios folks, because I'm about to get cut off. Um, but thank you so much, everyone. I adore you folks, and I'll see you tomorrow morning.